Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. In this video, we're going to be recreating the title scene to the brand new trailer for Disney's Tomorrowland. So if you haven't seen the trailer yet, there's a link in the description. Go check it out. And I'm really excited for this movie because Brad Bird. Really, that's it. I think he's a great director. And here's, here's the title from the trailer. And we've got this Adam thing going on. We've got some light in the background. And really, there's some tricks to make this Adam where it looks 3D, but it's actually 2D, um, and still make it work. So this is what I came up with. Pretty good. So let's get started with a brand new composition. So Command or Control N on the keyboard will bring up a new composition. Give it a name. Call it Tomorrowland, which is 10 seconds, 1920 by 1080. And first thing we need to do is we need to start making the atom, the flying atom. And I want to start with that because that's the most complex. So I'm going to grab a brand new solid. And so I hit Command Y on the keyboard, and it'll bring up the solid settings box. And I don't want this to be comp size. I want it to be a perfect square. So I'm just going to go 800 by 800. Doesn't matter the color. Click OK, and then I'm going to go up to the ellipse tool and just double click and it makes a circle. Now I actually want the circle to be slightly smaller. The reason why I double clicked it was that way it was certain to be just perfectly centered. Now what I can do is if I come down to the mask, click on mask path and hit command or control T for transform, then it gives me these bounding box. And then I need to hold down shift and command or shift and control and it'll keep everything centered and it'll bring that down. Now it looks like I just scaled the shape, but I didn't. So if I come in here and I turn the mask to none, you can see that the shape is still there, but the mask is now smaller before it went right to the edge. So that's a nifty trick. You just highlight the mask path, Command or Control T for transform, and you can do that. So let's go back to none because I don't need the mask on this, I just need it for the path. And I'm going to use an effect called Vegas. So I just go to my help menu and search Vegas. That's the way I like to find my effects. Turn it on. And then I need to right here where it says stroke image contours, I'm going to go down to mask path. And that's what it looks like by default. But what I want to do is I want to take this segments and I want to bring that to just one. Let's change the color to white, the blend mode to transparent. Let's look at it so far, looking good. And then let's increase the width and the hardness as well. And that's about what I want it to look like. But I do want this to be black and not white because that's what it looked like in the example. Maybe let's bring that width down a little bit. Okay, so now we need to make this rotate. So let's go into the rotate in the timeline. I'm going to hit R on the keyboard, brings up rotation. I'm going to give it a quick expression. So hold down Option or Alt on the keyboard, click on the stopwatch brings up the expression dialog box. And I'm just going to write time, asterisk, which is times, 300. And that I did that just from experimenting, figuring out about how far, how fast it should go. But look, it looks like I'm going in the wrong direction. And so that's easy enough. I just put a negative sign in front of this whole thing, and then it'll go backwards. So there is the first rotating part. Now, let's give this a name because I'm going to have lots of layers here. Let's call this circle one. And now I need to create a new solid. Let's make this one smaller. Let's go 20 by 20, actually a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna do that again. Let's go 40 by 40. That's better. Double click on the circle mask and it'll create a circle. Now let's call this dot one. And I'm going to place it right here at the end of that circle and then parent it to the circle. So now you can see it's spinning around like it's part of that atom. And I still maybe want this width to be down a little bit. That's looking better. So now what I need to do is turn both of these to 3D. And then on the dot, I'm going to select that, go to Layer, Transform, Auto Orient. It's going to bring up this box, and I want it to auto orient towards the camera. Now, in order for that to work, I need to have a camera in this composition. 
So let's go to layer, new camera. And it doesn't matter because I'm essentially keeping this flat, but I need the camera in order for it to auto orient towards it. And that's really it. What I'm gonna also do is I'm going to switch the color of these because they're gonna start to get lots of them here because I need to duplicate them more times. So I'm gonna highlight both of these, duplicate, and then let's take the circle. Remember I have the dot parented to the circle. I'm gonna scale down the circle a little bit. Hit the W on the keyboard, which brings my rotate tool. And I'm going to rotate this a little bit. Looking cool. Now let's just do this a couple more times. So as I duplicate these, I'm just moving them up so they're all kind of paired together. And then I just go to the circle layer and I rotate it into place. And I also like to kind of rotate the whole thing so that the dot is not always in the same spot. And you want all the dots to be kind of not going at the same time next to each other. That's looking pretty good. So the next is we need to have just one dot in the center, kind of the nucleus. So I'm just going to grab one of these dots that are already here, duplicate it, rename it to center, throw it down at the bottom, and let's move this, scale it up. Now because it was a smaller uh, solid, remember I had it only at 40 by 40, as I scale it up, you can see it's got some fuzzy edges, but if I just turn on this um, this button here, the continually rasterize button, then it's going to treat it as a vector and make it nice and sharp. So let's take a look at this. It's pretty cool. All right, so now just to make things easier, I am going to take all of these layers and pre-compose them, including the camera. So Command Shift C will pre-compose. Let's call this Adam. Now let's do the rest of the title. The font that I found that looked, I think, the best, it's not the exact font, but it's really close, funny enough, was called Futura. So type it out. Don't type in an O for in tomorrow. Leave a space there, and we might need to have a little bit more space. And let's just kind of line this up. And I'm going to put maybe a couple more spaces in there. And that's looking pretty good. Now let's take the atom layer, parent it to tomorrow. And then let's take the tomorrow text layer and then go to the align table or the align window. And if you don't have that, just go up to the window and find a line, click it on. And I'm going to make sure this is a line in the center. So there's the main title. Next, what we do is let's start to build the background and the ground layer. The ground layer is the easiest because it's just a black solid. So make a new black solid, call it ground, click OK, make sure it's comp size, and then just bring it down until it hits the bottom of, that, of the letters. I want this to be on top. Now the background, if we look at it, it's got this kind of a, almost a sunrise effect. And how I did that was I got a new composition. Let's call this sunrise. Doesn't matter the color because what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a layer style to it and we're gonna do the gradient overlay. Let's go down into the layer style settings, switch this to radial. And then this is where we're going to go in and add lots of cool stuff to this. So I like the gradient overlay as a layer style for one of the reasons why I like it is because of this gradient editor. I can have lots of different colors in here so I don't have to have just one color you know, fading into another. I can do multiple colors. So I still want this one to be black, that one to be white, but in between I want that to be yellow, and then red. So now I've got black, red, yellow, white. I'm going to take this, and because of the way that layer styles work, I need to take this and pre-compose it. So I'm going to take this sunrise, bring it to the bottom, Command Shift C to pre-compose. Sunrise Comp is a good name. Click OK. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stretch this just like that. And then maybe we add a blur to it, just a fast blur 
kind of smooth things out a little bit. Make sure that the repeat pixel edges are on. Looking pretty good. Now we need to add kind of a glow to this. So a couple things we can do, we can add like a lens flare in the background to kind of add a little bit more to it, or we can add a glow. Let's just kind of experiment and see what we like. Let's grab a new adjustment layer. Let's go to effect, stylize, and then glow. And right off the bat, it doesn't look great, but that's fine. Let's go in and change some of these settings. Increase the radius. Bring the threshold down. And just tweak this until we got what we like. And I think maybe this background is a little bit too wide. So let's bring it in a little bit so it's a little bit darker. I'm liking that. I also want to do a little lens flare. So let's grab a new adjustment layer. Let's actually name this top one Glow. Let's add another adjustment layer. We'll call this Flare. And bring this down below everything except for the sunrise comp. Go to generate lens flare and put it right in the middle. Let's switch it to a different kind. And there we go. That's looking pretty cool. Maybe bring the brightness down a little bit. Okay. So next let's animate this so the sunrise kind of pops on. And what I want to do is just, I'm going to mask a black solid over top of this and animate it on. So let's grab a new solid, make it comp size and black, give it a name of black mask, and let's give it a circle mask. I'm going to go ahead and just invert that and feather it. And at the beginning, I want this to be down like this, I'm just bringing the mask in. And let's go to about a half a second. I'm going to keyframe the mask. Go to the very beginning. And we're going to bring it all the way down. So that it animates up. And then what we're going to do from here is I'm just going to keyframe the expansion. And expand that out. Let's take a look at it. Looking pretty cool. So now let's just do a bit of a move. Now we can I can put a camera in here and turn everything 3D, but honestly, probably the easiest way is to have everything just scale. So I'm gonna grab a new null. We'll call this control. Now let's take everything except for this atom, which was already parented something, and parent that to control. And then what I want to do is I'm going to scale this up. Scale up a little bit more so it kind of pulls out. And then go out about four seconds. Bring that back down to 100%. Let's take a look at it. Now this last key frame I want to be easy eased. So that's F9 on the keyboard. And then it's going to be nice and slow at the end. Maybe we'll go into the graph editor. I'm going to highlight that. And let's grab it like that. Okay, looking pretty good. Well, that's really it. That's the tutorial. So I hope you learned some great stuff. A couple of little tricks that um, you might have picked up on was the command or control T for your mask. That'll bring up the transform effect and you'll be able to scale that down. The next thing is the gradient overlay layer style. And I actually had a recent video all about that. So you might have already seen that before. And then lastly, with this atom, the tricky part with that is let's actually go into that comp. Is there's lots of circles and you need to have these end dots to auto orient towards the camera. And what that does is these other ones that are in 3D space and kind of angled, that dot's still going to be round. And you want it to be round because if it doesn't look round, it's not going to look 3D. It's just going to look like a flat object. So I hope you learned some great stuff. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down in the 
comment section below. If you have a tutorial request, go ahead and put that down there as well. And if it's something that I can do and know how to do, and then I can do a tutorial on that and help you out. And also, if you haven't done so already, please, please, please go check out the channel. I've got lots of tutorials and you might just find something that you desperately need right now. And please consider subscribing as well. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.